Welcome to the Domtar Johnsonburg Mill. The following training will cover process safety management, PSM, for the chlorine dioxide plant. This training was developed for maintenance personnel and contractors. The purpose of this training is to ensure the safety of mill personnel and contractors and to comply with OSHA standards. Each employee involved in maintaining the ongoing integrity of the identified process equipment will be trained in an overview of the process and its hazards and in the procedures applicable to employees' job tasks. This will ensure that the employee can perform the job tasks in a safe manner. Training helps employees and contractor employees understand the nature and causes of problems arising from process operations and increases employee awareness with respect to the hazards particular to a process. Each employee presently involved in operating a process and each new or transferred employee before being involved in operating a newly assigned process will be trained in an overview of the process and in the operating procedures. Training will be provided at least every three years, and more often if necessary, to teach employees involved in operating a process to assure that the employee understands and adheres to the current operating procedures of the process. The management, in consultation with the employees involved in an operating process, shall determine the appropriate frequency of refresher training. Contractors will be required to complete annual training. This training consists of a review of the process and its equipment, and a detailed review of the following chemicals. Sodium hydroxide, chlorine dioxide, sodium chlorate, hydrogen peroxide, sulfuric acid and oxygen. A test is required for each section and the test is graded. An average score of 70% is required to pass the training. All contractors who pass will receive a sticker that states that they are trained in the covered process. Why is chlorine dioxide used? Because chlorine dioxide, or CLO2, is an exceptional pulp bleaching agent. It's preferred in modern pulp mills because it economically produces high strength, high brightness pulp, while eliminating the dangerous chlorine byproducts that can have environmental impacts. What are the risks of using chlorine dioxide? Despite its desirability as a bleaching agent, Chlorine dioxide gas can decompose violently, causing fire and explosion. Because of its safety risk, chlorine dioxide cannot be shipped safely. Therefore, it must be produced at the mill near its point of use and handled with great care. How is CLO2 made? In the SVPHP chlorine dioxide process, Sodium chlorate reacts with a hydrogen peroxide-based reducing agent in a sulfuric acid solution to produce chlorine dioxide gas. The byproducts of the reaction are oxygen and a neutral salt cake sodium sulfate. SVPHP stands for Single Vessel Process Hydrogen Peroxide. To begin the chlorine dioxide process, generator liquor is pumped from the bottom of the generator to the reboiler. Sodium chlorate and hydrogen peroxide and steam are added. From the reboiler, sulfuric acid is added on its way to the generator. After this, the reaction begins. The entire system operates under a vacuum for safety. The chlorine dioxide, evaporated water, oxygen, and other gases exit through the top of the generator where they next go to the generator condenser. In the absorber, chilled water enters the top of the absorber and flows down. As the gases rise, the water absorbs the chlorine dioxide, creating a chlorine dioxide solution. Vent gases from the process are drawn into the scrubber by a fan and are treated before discharge through a stack. This slide shows the chlorine dioxide plant, the storage tank farm that provides storage and containment for the chemicals involved with manufacturing chlorine dioxide and the rail car unloading area. Chlorine dioxide solution is stored in two tanks, 
each having a capacity of 87,000 gallons. Both tanks and the other chemical products received and used to make chlorine dioxide are stored in a containment area for spill control. This slide shows the north side of the chemical unloading area for the chlorine dioxide process. Sodium chlorate, hydrogen peroxide, and sodium hydroxide are delivered in rail cars, and sulfuric acid delivery is by truck. Sodium chlorate appears as a pale yellow solution. It has no odor and is stable alone, but reacts violently with strong acids. Extinguishing media for sodium chlorate is water either a water spray or deluge system. Do not allow clothing, shoes, or gloves to become impregnated with sodium chlorate solution. It is highly combustible when dry and may be ignited by friction or heat. This slide shows a sodium chlorate pump explosion that occurred at the Johnsonburg Mill. The sodium chlorate transfer pump exploded on July 5, 1998 at 4.30 a.m. No one was injured. The cause was the failure of the mechanical seal due to inadequate seal water flow and pressure. Sulfuric acid appears as a colorless, cloudy, oily liquid. It is corrosive to metals and produces hydrogen gas when reacted with metals. Its reaction with water is violent. It burns all human tissue upon contact and can be fatal if ingested. Hydrogen peroxide appears as a clear, colorless solution with a faintly sharp odor. It decomposes to generate heat and gas and expands rapidly while decomposing. It can result in spontaneous combustion when contacted with organics and burns all human tissue upon contact. Sodium hydroxide appears as a white solid or colorless liquid. It feels slippery on skin, has an alkaline of high pH, and burns all human tissue upon contact. It also forms hydrogen gas when contacted with some metals. Oxygen appears as a light blue transparent liquid. It is highly unstable with all petroleum-based products. It supports combustion and can cause severe thermal burns to human tissue upon contact. Chlorine dioxide, or CLO2, is a greenish-yellow gas in liquid. It has an irritating laundry bleach odor. It corrodes most metals and breaks down into explosive chlorine gas. It causes permanent damage to the lungs, and is potentially fatal if ingested or inhaled. Chlorine dioxide gas is heavier than air, so it sinks to low elevations. For any CLO2 lines in the chlorine dioxide plant, we use Teflon Gore-Tex Gylon gaskets. For your safety, before entering the chlorine dioxide plant, you must sign in at the fiber line control. You must also sign out after leaving. Escape respirators are mandatory in the fiber line and chlorine dioxide plant areas. Chlorine dioxide alarms are located throughout the area. When the chlorine dioxide concentration reaches 0.2 ppm, the alarms will sound and everyone must leave the area. Warning lights are installed as another indication of the presence of chlorine dioxide. The lights indicate chlorine dioxide exposure greater than 0.2 ppm. They are located on every floor and are accompanied by a horn sound. Relief lids as vents are provided for off-gas flow if necessary. The vent pictured is equipment with a relief lid located outside on top of the building away from the normal operating area. As stated in SOP 402105, the roof area of the chlorine dioxide plant should not be accessed unless conditions permit safe entry. This means the generator feed chemicals are shut off and stable generator pressure and operating conditions exist. 
For emergency stops, there are three hardwired e-stops for the chlorine dioxide plant. Two are located in the control room, one to shut down the entire process and the other to stop the chemical feed to the generator. The third emergency stop button, which also shuts down the chemical feed to the generator, is located on the ground floor of the chlorine dioxide plant in the east stairwell. For your general information, the chlorine dioxide plant and the tank farm are called the 402 area. All equipment is found under this number. All repairs or replacements must be done with in-kind replacement parts. To minimize the exposure to organic material, we use Dow Corning lubricants in the chlorine dioxide area. To be specific, it is Dow Corning 710R oil and Dow Corning 33 grease. If replacement in-kind is not available, contact your supervisor before continuing any work. The chlorine dioxide plant and tank farm are no smoking areas.